life centers in Nigeria and the If you are in this place, shout hallelujah. And we give you praise, we thank you, our King. For it is written that unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. God of all flesh and Father of all spirits, we ask that you stretch forth your hand this night. And grant that the least among our numbers will be as strong as David. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Turn your Bible to the book of John. John chapter 16. We'll read from verse 12, then we go to 1 John. That is if we can go to 1 John. We'll do a teaching for 35 minutes. Then we'll go for practicals. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things. Somebody say things. Things to come. That's the much we can take on John chapter 16. Now, Jesus was painstakingly attempting to introduce to us a new regime in the economy of God. A divine functionary was going to be admitted into the stage of the administration of the agenda of God. And Jesus was trying to acquaint us with the peculiarities of this functionary because an understanding of the peculiarities of his regime will determine how much progress you make in God's agenda in that regime. While we were in the university, I studied one of the courses in the sciences. And so if we have any theoretical course, we know it's an A. We we'll just cram it. So what we do before the semester starts is that we check out to find all the theoretical courses that we'll be doing, and then we'll catch it for A's. Okay, this. Then we'll battle with the mathematical courses. And it came to pass, there was this course that we had already counted for an A because it was, there was no way you could transform it into a mathematical course. But unfortunately for us, the lecturer that was taking the course went on sabbatical leave and they had to draft another lecturer to take the same course. This lecturer happens to have had a master's degree in quantum chemistry, a master's degree in physics, a master's degree in mathematics, a master's degree in electrical electronics engineering, a master's degree in biological sciences. So he was given in his PhD, he was conferred the honors of the doctor of science. That means he can teach in any science department world over. He was awarded that degree in Germany. His notes are in German. He translates to English while he lectures us. 
he wears two sets of spectacles. That means he... May the Lord give us understanding. <laughs> he'll use the first, the first range and then sometimes he'll take another one and, and fit it on. Yes, he was a modicum of knowledge. And he transformed that theoretical course into calculation. In fact, he introduced the course by deriving Scrudinger equation. The question is, what changed? Is it the course? The lecturer. So I'm trying to tell you that there's a different lecturer. And Jesus is the one that took the pain to introduce this lecturer. You would do well to know his style. I, you know, at the end of the day, we had a bag of carryovers in the class just because people could not adapt to the style of this new man, even though the course never changed. So I came to tell you there are, there are some form of adaptation that needs to take place in order for you to synchronize with the regime. <laughs> the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. First of all, I would like us to do some contrast and comparison. In the time when Jesus walked this world during his earthly ministry, there was no need for you to fast. Because if you wanted to conduct a prayer of inquiry, it was as good as going to Jesus and say, who sinned that this man was born blind? And Jesus reaches into the archives of divine antiquity and he brings out the file of that man and he said, okay, this guy that was born blind in the studio while I was creating, uh, what's your name, sir? Tayo. Taye. When Taye came in the studio, Jesus gave Taye eyes. When that guy showed up in the studio, Jesus refused to give him eyes. The reason was because Jesus knew that this man will manifest on earth as at the time that he will also manifest on earth. So Jesus came on earth to give him his own eyes. So it's, it's not, it means those guys were learning. And based on the lecture that Jesus taught them, he said sin can be the challenge. So then I said, okay, who now sin? Because he was born like this. Can we date it, date it back to the sins of his parents? And Jesus said in this particular case, it is not a sin question. I am responsible. And I omitted it so that the glory of God can be what? can be manifest. You see, a deep question was brought to Jesus. The person that brought the question didn't need to fast. Because while the bridegroom was still around, it was a regime of feasting. But unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know how you interpret it, Jesus said a time will come when the bridegroom will be withdrawn. Your spiritual arsenal will also experience adaptation. Because in that time, you will need to fast. Please tell your neighbor fasting has been included. I know there are many people in the congregation that would have wished that, oh my God, I came during the time when Jesus was around. It's too late for you to desire that. You're already here. Now, so there are some adjustments we have to make to accommodate this new regime. The first thing you will see in verse 12 is somewhat of a ministerial body. Because Jesus wanted, you see, oh my God, Jesus, hallelujah. Jesus expressed a constraint. If he wants to teach, for instance, he will not teach because there is revelation. One of the things that governs whether or not Jesus will unveil the insight for the moment is your own stature, the stature of the congregation, the stature of his audience. Because he came and said, there are so many things I have to say to you, but you cannot bear them. You don't have the stature to bear things at that level. That means Jesus was constrained. And even though there was utterance, there could not be delivery because there was a stature matter. But in this new regime, are you, are you with me? That is coming. Your inadequacy in terms of stature will not count, will not affect the deliverables. He said, How be it? I know you didn't get what I said when I talked about stature. 
let me try to help. There is a prophet, a prophet in a certain city, and he is a genuine prophet. He is, he is gifted with the prophetic. And because of that, so many people travel. I'm not talking about the prophet, one prophet in this town. It's not that one. <laughs> There's a prophet. But that's not the prophet I'm talking about. May the Lord give you understanding quickly. <laughs> so there's a prophet. And this guy is an accurate, genuine prophet, full of heaven's endowment. And he's a most sought-after prophet. All right? I don't know what happened previously, but he has a huge protocol around him, if you have to see him, you go through different levels of screening. And it came to pass that uh, a certain market woman felt she was challenged and uh, she started the screening process, survived the first screening process, entered into the second screening process, she survived the second process, went to the third screening process. And the third screening process is very easy. It's PA we come. If he doesn't like your face, you have failed the... <laughs> so she failed at that point. And she was so frustrated that she went back to her place of trading. And it came to pass that this man of God was heading somewhere and he had a flat tire. And his tire went flat in front of the woman's shop. And thank God that PA was not around. So when he came out of the car, just the time that was required for the... Um, driver to swap tires he just came and saw the woman and the gift began to flow and he looked at her and said oh this is your situation your trouble is coming from your mother this is what your mother did this 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 and before he could tell her how to use the revelation the the driver was true with the swap so she was armed with prophetic insight but she did not have the stature to handle it that prophetic insight was the basis of a civil war that began in that family till today. Now, the revelation was designed to bring redemption, but because the woman did not have the stature to handle cargo at that level, what was intended for good became an object to actualize a kind of dichotomy that it would take Jesus himself to heal in that family. So Jesus said, I have so much to say to you, but unfortunately, you seem not to have the stature to contain it. So I, I will keep it for you, not from you. And it shall come to pass in the regime of this personality that is about to introduce to us. That constraint will no longer abound with his own deliverables. And you'll be able to enter into the economy of the things that God intended to bring forth for which... Jesus was constrained by the stature issue. Now, I'll need to tell you something quickly. Are you with me? The first thing I need to say is this. Fundamentally, when spirits are introduced in the Bible, spirits are defined in the Bible, there are two bases of defining spirits. First of all, you can define a spirit by its most predominant character. And that character you get to know when you look upon the impact of the influence of that spirit on his host. So in scripture we have spirits of infirmity. You will never know how terrible the spirit is until you see the impact the spirit brings on the host. You still remember that woman that was bowed down for 18 years? And I know the doctors, you know, they went to school, studied for six years. They must be saying something. They must have a diagnosis. But when Jesus came to minister to the woman, Jesus didn't need a diagnosis. He, by the gift of discernment of spirit, he was able to spot the item, the spiritual personality that was behind the quagmire. And he was able to isolate it by an authoritative decree. Spirits are also defined by the territory where they function. And so you might find a spirit called the Prince of Persia, the Territoria. Are you with me? The personality that Jesus seemed to be introducing to us is a spirit being. 
And it's the first mode of classification that was used in this case. The spirit of truth. How be it? I'm constrained today. But how be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come. You see, Jesus was constrained from saying what he was burdened to say because of the limitation of his audience. Are you with me? You will expect that when the spirit of truth comes, he will not continue from where Jesus stopped and then continue saying. The spirit of truth has a different approach to establishing you in the economy of God. And the Bible reveals that when the spirit of truth comes, he, he doesn't come saying. But what he wants to achieve is to guide you into the reality of that thing that Jesus wants to say. If you enter into the reality of it, you experience the reality of it, then you will be the one to say it to others. Are you with me? He's interested in what? In reality. I know I was born a stammerer. And the symptoms of stammering that bedeviled me was grievous. I was fairly intelligent. But next to dumb, and I had no utterance. Don't give me an oral test because I'm going to be totally flawed. But if you give us a written test, I might, I might survive it. Hallelujah. So it was a great challenge. And then it came to pass. In the place of prayer, the Holy Ghost now revealed to me. He said, as for you, this is my covenant with you. I have put my words in your mouth. You see, he didn't, he didn't address my stammering. What he just revealed is that, young man, I smuggled some words and I put them in your mouth. Then I figured that if God put words in my mouth, he will have a way of bringing them out. He gave me an encounter that encounter was what delivered me from stammering. I was not only delivered from stammering. It started gradually. It was not instantaneously. Whenever I want to preach, I will pray. Okay, you say you will take stammering away. All right, I'm going to preach now. And when I get to the pulpit, stammering is suspended. When I come out of the pulpit, stammering comes back. I say, okay. At least you have paved the way for the assignment. And it came to pass, as I kept obeying God, a day came, I couldn't find the symptoms of stammering. Jesus, the Holy Ghost did not heal me from stammering by touching my tongue. What he did to me was that he brought me into the reality of utterance, spiritually. Over time, that reality knocked off what my challenge was. The spirit will guide you into spiritual depths and spiritual experiences. The capital that it will give you with which you will prosecute destiny happens to be spiritual substance. He will lead you into this substance and then he will not be talking. He wants to lead you into substance, lead you into reality. And then that reality will forge you and make you such a person that God wants you to be. I remember I was sitting under a great preacher in a conference and the preacher would preach and point me. Preach, preach. When he did that four times and he was, I don't know if he knew what he was doing but it was every time he pointed it was me. And I noticed when other people stood up to go for a break I was too weak to stand up. So I was sitting on that seat throughout the break time. And eventually, I sat on that seat for eight hours without standing. Not because I didn't want to stand. I couldn't stand. I was too weak to stand. Are you with me? Now, my understanding was unfruitful as to what was happening to me. But I did not know that what God was doing was that he was imparting utterance to me. It was the spirit of utterance that came upon me that day. Even though I had received that impartation, I did not know it. I didn't know it. And in the school of the spirit, if you receive something that is spiritual and you do not know it, it's not yours. 
I carried the healing anointing for five years. That sign will come whenever in, I'm in intense prayer. That sign will come. Whenever I'm under intense worship, the sign will come. But I did not know what the sign meant. And because I did not know, it was not operational. You see, the Spirit of God will release a spiritual thing to you. And then he will take you through a school, an intelligence college, and begin to teach you things that you cannot learn. Are you with me? If you stumble upon the library, you can't learn such things. If you sit before a professor, you can't learn such things. Meanwhile, there's a school that you need to be admitted in in order for you to learn those matters. And as long as I had not yet learned the lesson of discerning that anointing, it was not useful. Many men died around me with sickness. And I never knew that what was rising from my hands at that time was a healing anointing. Because I was yet to submit to the Holy Spirit to guide me into the fullness of the reality that he has imparted already. You see, impartation is not the end point. It's the starting point. And what comes upon your life through impartation is a seed that confers a responsibility upon you. You have to nurture it. That's why Jesus had to give us insight on how to deal with this new lecturer. Because he also has his own school danger equation. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So by definition, Jesus called him the spirit of truth. That's where I will, I will stop today. The spirit of truth. I need to unravel the meaning of that. What's the meaning of spirit of truth? Spirit of truth. An, an intellectual here will say the, the spirit that has truth or the spirit that only speaks truth. Come with me to First John chapter 5. The first thing you need to know is the meaning of the name of the lecturer. It is revelatory. It will determine if you prosper in his regime. And when I look across the body of Christ, I see that there is little knowledge of the workings and the administration of the Spirit of God. And if we are going to gain mastery in things immortal in things eternal, then we must understand this new functionary that Jesus is introducing. In First John chapter 1, are you with me? If you are still here, say amen. Okay, let's do it this way. Let me, let's do an equation. Let's construct an equation with some scriptures. First John chapter 1 verse 5. First, these are, you know, when you are doing, solving a mathematical sum, there are some items that are given. Given that X is equal to 2. Right? So we'll make an equation. And then you see, the reason why we need to make an equation is because uh, the verse of interest <laughs> is complex. So we need to make an equation, unravel it. Then we can key into that verse. Then it will open up. All right? Uh, the first aspect of the, of the equation is in verse 7. First John chapter 5, verse 7. There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Second, there are three that bear witness in earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. Now, you know what I just did? Oh, you are not following. This equation. What I did now is that I read two scriptures out of context. These scriptures are only consistent with their habitat. Are you with me? What I did is a violation of theology. I did that to create an equation. Then now I want to correct the mistake by reading in context and telling you that these two scriptures do not hang in limbo. They are part of a progression. And I like to expose us to that progression so that you will see where I'm going. Sometimes you will need to spend two years on a scripture for it to open up. If you need it badly, it will open up. Hallelujah. But if you are in a hurry... 
he never opens. And the Bible says that the secret things belong to God. And the things that are revealed belong to you and what? Your children. It means the same light of revelation that you have walked in. You can pass it to your son as, a, as, as inheritance. That this is what I did that opened the chamber. Your whole lineage should walk in the light of that understanding because you were able to un unravel it. The honor of kings is that they search things out. May the Lord raise kings among us. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, context. What is the context? The context is like an accreditation. And the accreditation is necessary because of verse 5. He said, who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Who is he that overcometh the world? Did you notice anything in that scripture? Okay, you didn't notice. If the one that overcomes the world is the one that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Oh my God, no time. No time. Uh, the systems of this world, if you have ever read the book of Genesis chapter 4, Genesis chapter 4, that's when Satan, after the fall of man, decided to raise men to develop systems. Systems that are developed in the city, the civilization of, of the land of Nod. The land of Nod was a place that Cain found after he was driven out of the Garden of Eden. He had accepted that he would pioneer a life and a, 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 um, 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 a system, a world that is established on a certain principle. The principle of the system that Cain wants to pioneer is a world apart from God. Because in order for him to pioneer that world, he had to depart from the presence of God. And then he settled in the land of Nod. That was his platform. But I don't have time to work that out. But what he did was that he created systems in this age. And if you are a part of any of these systems, and you live by those systems, without doing anything serious, those systems have been designed to take you apart from God, take you away from God. Hallelujah. You don't need to be creative. Just allow the wave of the system to drive you. And 10 years down the line, you just find out, hey, I left God behind. Do you understand that? So the Bible is saying, who is he that can overcome the systems? Based on research, it was discovered that only people that believe in Jesus have the capacity to live beyond the scope of such systems. Are you here? Okay, now you got that. The next point is this. If our possibility of living above the systems is tied to our believing in Jesus, then there's a possibility that the devil can sell a fake Jesus to us. And if you ride on that boat, you still go away from God. So there was a need for accreditation. Are you, are you here? We need to know how to recognize the real Jesus. You see, John is prophetic. He's a prophetic type of apostle. If you are reading his book, you must read with that insight. Uh, Paul is the teaching type of apostle, the one that establishes doctrine. If you are reading, you must understand. You need to be very cerebral to understand the writings of Paul. Peter is the evangelistic type of apostle. He's very powerful. And he, most of his writings actually reveal the secret of power. He spoke more about government than any other apostle in his time. Now, so if you know the aspects in which God's grace was established in these functionaries, you will be able to relate with their writings better. Now, so the issue now is how can we identify the real Jesus. Then he told us how we can. In verse 6, this is he that came by water. Are you with me? This real Jesus. This accreditation. Verse 6 is accreditation. He said the real Jesus came by water. Indicative of the fact that one of the ways that the identity of the real Jesus 
was unveiled was when he went to John the Baptist's baptismal service. John the Baptist was given the ordinance of baptism, and the reason for which he was given that ordinance was that it was a strategy by which the Christ could be revealed to the Israel of God. Uh, many people got blessed in John's baptism. Um, many people confessed their sins. They felt lighter. They felt connection with God. Glory. But the reason why he was sent to do what he did was what? So that he could, through that baptism, identify who the Christ was. So the Bible says Jesus came by water. And John, in the book of John chapter 1, if you read from verse 30 downwards, you are going to find the record of John the Baptist. He bore record. Because the one that sent him to baptize, say, anyone upon whom the Spirit of God descends and remains is he. That is the other level of the baptismal hierarchy. Whereas John is the Baptist. That one is the baptizer in fire. So because of that, John was given marching orders. And John bore record that his marching orders came to pass. And that Jesus was the Christ because he was revealed by water. One. Two. The Bible also reveals that Jesus was revealed by blood. I don't have time to establish the theology of blood. Because if we go to the book of Genesis chapter 4, you are going to see how that the blood of Abel had vocabulary. I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. That's the blood of an innocent man. Innocent. He was not guilty. His blood had vocabulary. The blood of Jesus or the blood of a righteous man, that's a different kind of blood. In fact, the earth has never drank that blood before. So the first time the earth drank the blood, the earth, there was earthquake at that spot. It was that earthquake that rattled the foundation of the Holy of Holies and tore that veil. Are you with me? And you know, the, several omens found the expression there was an eclipse. And the centurion that was in charge of Golgotha, an unbeliever, a hidden, confessed that indeed this is a righteous man. So by blood, his identity was revealed. Because that man has seen the blood of criminals, of rapists, of murderers. Nothing happened. But the day they hung a righteous man, even an unbeliever, the omens were so so instructive that he acknowledged that this one is not from among us. He came by blood. Thirdly, just in case you were not there, when he came by water or by blood, there's a third means by which you can know Jesus. But the Bible says it is the spirit that what? That beareth witness. You are not with me. See, in the Godhead, there's division of labor. For instance, you find the Bible say, it is the spirit that quickens it. So all quickening business has been zoned to the spirit. And so the Bible says, if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the same quickening reaction will take place in your vessel. So you cannot say you have the Holy Ghost and you're not quickened. It's like saying you have water but you're not wet. There are several dimensions of the speakings of God you cannot enter into until you are quickened. There are several levels of the voice of God you cannot hear until you are quickened. That's spirit business. Another aspect of spirit business that is zoned to him is witness bearing. So, definition. You know, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 6, the Bible says that the, he called the spirit another name. Whereas John 16 called him spirit of truth. First John chapter 5 verse 6 says, It is the spirit that bears witness because the spirit is truth. Not spirit of truth, but spirit is truth. So what is truth? Truth or the ministry of truth is the ability of the Holy Spirit to bear witness about a thing that your senses cannot capture. Are you with me? Oh, we are not in the lecture. Let me stop. This is theory. You need to understand the principle before you know how the practice can be administered. <laughs> are you with me? Let me try again for, t for two minutes. If you don't get it, we'll just leave it. It, it means it's one of the sacred things that belongs to God. <laughs> we'll, leave it. we'll leave it with God until God is willing to unveil it. 
Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, the Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. In your experience, if you have worked with God for more than 10 years, you will know that the way he furnishes that substance is different. Sometimes he can give you a vision, and that's the substance that proves that something that you cannot touch is real. Are you with me? Yes, sir. That vision he gave you, the Bible is calling it truth, because that is his style of witnessing to you about a matter you cannot handle. Stop, wait, wait, wait. Sometimes it can give you a knowing, and that knowing is the substance. That knowing is truth. It is his attempt to bring you into the economy of the invincible. Are you with me? Yes, sir. There are so many channels by which he can furnish that substance. Are you here? Yes, sir. But in any fashion or way it comes, it is designed to make you have capacity to handle the invincible realm. If you are not a master in this, you will miss many things. Practical. In the practical session, I need to tell you how to connect with spiritual treasure. This is lucky. Most of you work on the island. I remember when I was staying in VGC, this road was under construction. From 5 a.m., I got to the office by 7.30 when I was still working in Lagos. Hallelujah. And that's the life you live. Most of you may not be able to pay the price to maintain your spirit. But if the devil had, had achieved that in your life, you have failed. Because when I was doing 5 o'clock to 7.30, I was doing it fasting. The largest tanks in Nigeria, in Lagos, I work in the petroleum industry, and I still work till now. I climb tanks fasting. 14 tanks fasting. When you finish climbing two, your legs will begin to vibrate like this. I walk offshore fasting, and there is Turkey there, Turkey. Yes. I got some of the most iconic revelations on tanks, product tanks. Because the farthest distance is not from east to west. The distance between your heart and your mind. It's a parallel line that never meets. So you will decide on what plane you will function. But when the spirit comes, he doesn't speak of himself. When the spirit comes, he guides us into all reality. When the spirit comes, he glorifies Jesus. And for many of us, even though he has come in you through regeneration, he has not come for you. If we are going to take this country back from evil men, then our ranking in the spirit, our capacity, will have to increase, individually and corporately. If you have never stayed in Kano for two years, you will not know how dark our enemies are. Hallelujah. The only way of survival is that our rank must increase. Let me give you two lessons now, quickly, for which we need to practicalize. Because the Holy Ghost keeps giving us signs 24 hours. It's just that believers can read them. Those signs are non-cognitive. But in them holds great power. And if you can master it, your business will be better off for it. Oh, it doesn't matter what school you attended, Oxford, Harvard. If you want to adapt to what you learned in Harvard in Echo, you need the Holy Ghost. Mm, you need the Holy Ghost. It was Thomas Houston that trained us. It is the last dime of the old school in the oil industry. He is a modicum of knowledge. I don't know where he studied, but he knows everything. 
came here, did some research for two weeks, and was telling us about the, our industry in our country, things we didn't know. We crammed these works. But when we went to the depots to regulate, we didn't need Houston's manual. What we met there were demons. We met Igbe, we met charms. Okay, let me leave you. <laughs> then we had to develop, my colleagues, many of them became paralyzed at work. Because you want to regulate people that are spiritually deep. And you come there like a feather. The Spirit of God will tell you when to sit, when to stand, when to walk away, and when to run. Many times your seat will sleep in the shrine during the weekend, and it will be restored on Sunday night. What you learned in Harvard will not work there. But we thank God for the degree you got. <laughs> Hallelujah. It was able to earn you the platform, but surviving on the platform, you need the spirit of truth. <laughs> Are you still with me? Yes, I have so little time for the practical. The first thing you need to do, if you want to tap into his frequency, you need to know how to empty your heart. You, you, you need a husband now, and you need him quickly. Empty your heart. You need house rent. You need to pay your fees in Harvard. Empty it. Forget about. Can you do that? For the next five minutes. Just empty your heart. Until God becomes enlarged, your solution is not in sight. He will become big. He needs to become big. That's why most times God reaches out to us during worship session. Because when you are worshiping, you take your eyes off yourself for a moment. Then it is possible for God to inject something that will take you outside of the box. Can you do that? Then if you achieve that, then you pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Don't allow your heart, your mind, go to that your problem. And just in case it goes, jack it back, bring it. You need a lot of discipline on your mind to be able to align enough to pick from the frequencies of God. Hallelujah. I found out that there's more excitement inside of your heart with the Holy Ghost than with Premier League, Champions League. Who are the players of this day? I don't even know the players now. Somebody came and said, somebody came and said, there's a match I must watch. When Anand came, for 15 minutes it was boring. The Holy Ghost is not boring. If you know where to look, you will see great and mighty things which you do not know. We are going to pray in tongues of five minutes. If you offload your mind and you focus on the Holy Spirit, you will see his sign. Can we try that? It's a practical session. It's not straight ministration. I want some capacity to be developed. Can you forget about your sorrow? Forget. If somebody is sleeping, touch the person and say, you are sleeping. Satan is, uh, is on your case. Leave that problem behind and begin to engage now. Just, just engage. engage. Be concentrated. Let your mind be trained to focus. To focus on God. Make sure you are focusing. Just, just focus on Jesus. For when your eyes become single, your body shall be full of light. sama. <laughs> Kabe susela bresko pa kunte masila kombali jami na Korea zeklo pronda skapata. In Jesus' name, listen, listen. We are still in class. It takes five minutes for you to enter into the hearing lane. Five minutes. Listen. It takes one hour to charge your batteries every day. That is if you are just starting. If you are starting in the school of the spirit, learning consistency. 
what you do to learn consistent, you, you pray in your house, consecrate a spot. Let that place be your place of prayer. Don't just pray everywhere. There's a pl- discipline yourself to, to go to that place. Are you with me? And don't change it. Remain there. You will need to know regimented living for you to gain mastery or spirit capacity. Are you with me? Because when I said we should pray now, so one hour of prayer, if you are starting, one hour is enough. After that one hour, any other prayer you pray on it, you will gain an ascendancy, you will mount up. Whether you know what you saw or not is, is based on training. Are you with me? But your spirit will begin to enlarge. After six months of praying one hour every day, your spirit will now need two hours. Yes, it will enlarge. It will enlarge. Are you going? And a banker can do two hours. A rig worker can do three. If we are going to take this battle to the gates, we'll take it to the economic war front. Everybody must be as strong as David. Now, are you with me? I just did five minutes now. Five minutes of tongues. You know what I saw? I saw an angel coming into this hall with a lamp. Don't believe me. Don't, don't be, this is training. This is training. Eh? So that you will know how to use your spirit. You, you will need to lean on your spirit. The Bible says that the spirit of a man shall sustain his infirmity. Listen, don't believe me. I said I beheld an angel and he came into this hall with a lamp. And I began to ask God, what is the meaning of this lamp? And the Lord said to me that it is a revelational gift that we operate when the person is asleep. That's what he wants to give. And I already see one. I see two. Okay, four. Four people. Four people. Lord, in the name of Jesus, you said you want to give a revelational gift that will begin to manifest in people's lives when they sleep. As they switch off, then you will switch on. Show me the four people that you have chosen to walk in this gift. From my left hand side to my right hand side. From my left hand side to my right hand side to the back of the hall. Show me the four people. Now, ushers, if you can, bring me those four people. Listen, we are still in the lecture. Are you with me? Oh, stop praying, stop praying. Stay with me, stay with me. We are still in the practical. Are you here? Your spirit has great power. You have developed your mind, which is good. We all did that in a measure. A time will come where so many people have developed their mind. And the difference will be made by who has developed his spirit. This is that time. Hallelujah. I want you to practice what I taught you. Mm. Mm. You see? I see. I see a whitish liquid in the hands of this angel. And the name of this liquid, as he recommends, this, the name, because <laughs> you can actually receive messages from angels in your office. It's called I serve. To wash your eyes so that you can see. There are already two people that is washing their eyes. Two people. Two people. It's coming stronger. Two people. Two people in the congregation. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Are you with me? You are not with me. We will soon, I will soon pray for the sick. Don't worry. Be calm. If your womb is locked, it will be open this night. Ah. Do you know that that statement I made is not an amen matter? That statement about the womb. It's not for you to say amen. Because it will happen this night. Not by amen. By the sovereignty of God. Can you see? Now there are four angels in this hall. There are four angels. There are four angels here. Okay? Are you with me? There is a lady. A lady on this, this row. A lady here. And one of the angels is touching that lady. At the count of four, you will see the lady. One. Two. Three. Four. Are you with me? Oh, you are not with me. Remember, the spirit.
spirit of a man shall sustain his infirmity. Do you know I would have died long ago? Went to walk on a vessel. And the people I saw, a fight broke out. And they broke bottles to kill. And the Holy Ghost told me, tap the man's shoulder. Tap his shoulder. So I touched him here. And the man started crying. The, the man that wanted to kill, when I touched him here. Sometimes you will have only two seconds to take a decision. If you don't know the Holy Ghost. If you don't know. Now, you see. Now, you see. He has, I see the angel of fire now. I see the angel of fire. There are five people. There are five people. There are five people. Fire will come. Fire will come. Fire will come. Fire will come. Five of you. The spirit of a man shall sustain his infirmity. The spirit of a man. That person in this hall that the doctors told you that you will not be able to conceive. I come to tell you. That you will have twins. You will have twins. You will have twins. You will have twins in the name of Jesus. All right. Your spirit will sustain your infirmity. Your spirit. If you know how many wicked men are on the platforms you want to enter, you prepare yourself. And when they fight you and see that there's no hope of success, they will leave the way for you. Are you with me? I'm seeing, I'm, I'm seeing someone in the congregation. You are deaf in one ear. You are deaf. You, that ear. You hear one sound brrr, inside of that ear. Where are you? You hear a sound in the ear. Okay. Can you put your finger on that ear? Put your finger on that ear because that sound is going to come out. That sound. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Okay, let me pray for the sick. And, and leave your way. Hey! I'm sorry, I'm a kale. I'm a seo konsama. I'm in a sight of coma. The spirit of a man shall sustain his infirmity. The spirit of a man. Now, bro, let me use that aisle. You know why I'm coming here? You know why I'm coming here? The angel of the Lord is coming here. As I'm just following. I'm going to the places where that angel is going in the natural. I'm, I'm going to the places. Okay, the angel stops here. The angel stops here. It means this way, this way. This circle. This circle. There's somebody the angel has come for. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus. Show me, show me, show me, show me, show me. You can be accurate in the spirit. You can, you can know if a decision is from God or not. You can know. You can know if it's time to take your journey. You can know whether or not to board that airplane even though you are in business class. Can we rise up? I want to challenge you to speak in tongues for two minutes. The heavens are rained already. The heavens are rained. The heavens are rained already. Something is about to break loose. It's about to break loose in your life. Something is about to break loose. That lady that I said, put your hands in the ears. Don't remove it. No, no, Organedo, Organedo, Do, Oh, Organedo, Organedo. Oh, 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 oh,
Kenedo. Oh, Kenedo. Now, sister, you are healed. You are already healed. In that ear, you can ask your neighbor to help you check it. You are already healed. I want to give you something from the law. Such as I have. Such as I have. If you truly desire sensitivity in the spirit. An anointing will descend upon you and it will kickstart your journey. And indeed it shall come to pass. That the least among us will become as strong as David. I ask Lord that you bless everyone. Bless everyone. Bless everyone. Oh my God. Oh my God. Hallelujah. In Jesus name. You can drop your hands. If you use glasses to see. Let me see your hand. Can you remove the glasses and put it in your pocket now? Now. Put the glasses in your pocket now. Are, are, you, are you still here? Okay, lay hands on the eyes now. Now. Um, every form of deafening conditions, maybe one ear is deaf. One, take this finger, put in that ear now. Put in that ear now. Now. Put it in that ear. Let me pray for you. If you can, you may give me a good amen. In the name of Jesus. No, no, not good enough. In the name of Jesus. Lord, tonight I bind every blinding spirit. I bind every deafening spirit. Oh my God, I'm seeing all kinds of pain. I bind every pain. I bind asthma in the name of Jesus. I command that yoke to break in the name of Jesus. Pain below the um umbilical cord. I say vanish right now in the name of Jesus. Those eyes, I speak to you. Eyes, see now. Ears, hear now. That one that is expecting the foot of the womb, I command the womb to open now. Oh, your cycle is already irregular, but I speak to you. That womb opens now in the name of Jesus. Yeah, some chains are breaking now. I command the chains to break. I command the chains to break. I command the chains to break. I command the chains to break in the name of Jesus. You have one minute to run a test to know if the infirmity has been lifted. But listen, before I run away, listen. 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 How many? One, two, three. Okay, three people. Three, three, Lord, three. Okay, five now. It's five now. Okay, five people, five people, Lord. Okay, seven now. Okay, there are seven people. God will give you the gift of healing now. It will, you will feel the fire. Gift of healing. Oh, wait, wait. You people sang, you sang as if it was a tape. So let me ask God to increase uh, the anointing. Father, increase the anointing here. Increase the anointing. Increase the anointing. Increase the anointing. Increase the anointing. Increase the anointing here. Increase the anointing. Holy Ghost. 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 Move. Okay, the yoke. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. You will just wake up. When you wake up, you will discover you are free. Seven of you, the grace is coming. The grace is coming. It's the healing anointing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, it's coming stronger. It's coming stronger. It's coming stronger. Yes, 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 yes. 